Hi everyone and welcome to Overwatch HQ episode 2. I'm your host James Duggan joined by Chloe Rad, Kyle O'Connor and introducing Kevin Naki. What's up Kevin? Hey! So today we're going to be talking about the introduction of season 1 of competitive mode on the PTR. We're also going to be discussing the rewards for that which is golden guns and awesome aesthetic things. And finally we're going to be talking about how the McCree and Widow nerfs changed everything. But first, Kevin Naki, give us the rundown on what we can expect from competitive mode on the PTR. So we know that seasons are going to be two and a half months long now. They're going to mirror approximately real life seasons. So spring, summer, fall, winter. They've ditched the old tier system we saw before. You now have a skill based system where you get a rank between zero and a hundred. The closer you get to hundred, the higher skill you are. And your teams are theoretically going to be grouped into equivalent ranks depending on where the people around you are at. And that's sure. kind of the high level of overview for the seasons. And based upon uh, who you were facing, if they have a higher skill rating, because you can see all that now. When you queue, you can see the people that are in a pre-made group that have queued together. That's right. If you're a solo player, I think that's a fantastic feature. And if you end up winning against people who have a higher skill rating than you, you uh, stand to gain more skill rating yourself. That's right. Which I think is very good. Uh, so this has been out on the PTR. There's been a little bit of controversy over the sudden death mode. In the beta version of competitive play, it triggered if both teams, say, didn't deliver the payload. Now, they have refined that system. So basically, let's say you're doing payload your team pushes two points to the second checkpoint, and then if the enemy team is only able to push to the first checkpoint, you will just straight out be rewarded victory uh, in the current version of the PTR. In beta, that would have triggered sudden death. So they have reduced the number of occurrences, but it still does happen. They it, said initially that it was happening like 35% of the games yeah. or something like that. 35 to 40%, yeah, yeah, even 50, I think, yeah. It's too much. It's quite a lot. Um, also, what was very interesting in this this video Jeff Kaplan that put up like last week, we were all at E3, but he said, uh, if you want four Maze or two Lucios, go for it. And that was in regards to the just kind of casual mode, which I think is really weird because he didn't end up men mentioning anything about hero limits. So my first question that I just want to pose to everybody, uh, currently in the, the ranked ladder mode on the PTR, there is no hero limit. You can do six Winstons, you can do whatever comp you want. So do you guys feel as though that's something that you want to see transition into live, or do you want hero limits? Chloe, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, I, w I think I would like to see hero limits in competitive only because the opportunity for people to just completely troll matches is too high. Like, I know from Counter-Strike I've been grouped in, in, into too many games where people just throw matches and things like that, and I, I don't want to have that kind of experience in Overwatch. Kyle, what do you think? So I remember last episode I said that I was interested in the idea of maybe having, you know, a limited amount of uh, hero switches. I've completely changed 180 degrees. Uh, I think being able to change as much as possible uh, is, yeah, Kevin's on board. I, I think being able to switch on the fly and having to adapt to the team comp is such a fundamental part of Overwatch. Like, that is such an Overwatch thing. Whatever. Six, uh, you want to play the Call of Duty comp and have six Soldier 76s, <laughs> do that. You, you want to go... Uh, Got you uh, in my sights. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, you want to go six Winstons, do it. There's a counter to all of it. Just go six uh, Reapers. There we go. Thanks for coming out. All right, Kevin, hero limits, what do you think? I think it should be an all-or-nothing scenario. I don't think that you should impose a limit of, like, two on each side or something like that. I think that feels arbitrary to me. You either should have no duplicate heroes or you can have up to six. Like, there should be no in-between. Previously, when I was talking to you about this, James, I was kind of on the there should be no duplicate heroes. I like being able to mix up the comps on a more regular basis. I, like Kyle, have actually shifted on this recently. Uh, and the way that I see them designing the game, I totally see that there could be a need to all of a sudden go for Winston Double Lucio to try and bust a comp or bust a defensive position or something like that. And I do like adding in that strategic element. So I, I'm, I'm in favor of as many heroes as you want on a team right now. Yeah, I have to say I agree, um, which is was very interesting because as soon as I started watching this Jeff Kaplan video, one of the first things he says is like, you know, casual mode is there for you to have fun. You can do four maze, you can do two Lucios. And I was like, okay, the first thing he's going to talk about is hero limits. And at no point during that video did he even address that it was a concern of the community. So I think uh, at this point, hero limits are not going to be in season one. Um, but the things that we are going to see is skill rating. There's no more tier system. Um, that's the name of this breakout, No More Tears. And there's a nice thumbnail of Diva Prime. Oh, no, Prime, <laughs> I get it. Uh, all right, well, let's talk about some of the things that you get. The rewards uh, are why a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it just to test their skill, see where they're going to end up. But man, there's some awesome rewards. Uh, Hearthstone, for a long time, had this kind of problem where you would do your placement matches. By the way, it's 10 placement matches to place you in the competitive season no, than Overwatch right. now. Uh, and you would do your placement matches, so to speak, you would get to rank 20, you would get your card back, and you would, at that point, either try to get to Legend or just bounce. Uh, so there's a this very divisive approach to the game for a long time in Hearthstone, 
where it was all or nothing. Now it seems that they've learned their lesson from that. Uh, so for doing your 10 placement matches, you're more than likely going to unlock the Static Ilio Spray as well as the Player Icon. However, if you end the season in Heroic, you're going to unlock the Animated Ilio Spray, which looks awesome. It does, by yeah. the way. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, the Ilios mm -hmm. Animated Spray, beautiful as, an, as somebody with extreme OCD when it comes to game collectibles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I, I, if I'm at a conference, I'm going to figure out a way to play and make sure <laughs> that I do my 10 placement matches so I don't miss anything. Yeah. Uh, and so then, Going kind of deeper into the whole ranked system, you can get golden guns, but this is a cumulative reward. This is a reward that players who are very skilled and play a lot will unlock first, uh, and this is a reward that if you aren't that skilled and you don't play that much, you will still eventually unlock if you participate in seasons. So in the current version of the PTR, one of these golden skins will cost you 300 competitive points, and you earn one competitive point for every ranked win. So do the math, that's one skin equals 300 ranked wins, which is a significant amount of time. And the thing that I actually saw recently that I'm super excited about is I thought it was going to give you the default model of the gun. It doesn't. It adapts to the skin you're using. Yes. Ooh. Which is great. Um, Ooh, Blackheart. Torbjorn's legendary. Axe. I have yeah. a Bloodheart. Bloodheart with a right. gold axe or a Blackheart oh, with a gold axe. axe. Mm. So, Kyle, so do you think this is enough of an incentive to, to kind of make you grind out for those extra competitive oh, yeah. points? No, no, I'm totally going to. I, You're talking to a guy who spent years of my life doing arena modes just to get the arena weapons, like, <laughs> let alone if I'm gonna get skins for my favorite characters in Overwatch. Uh, I personally think this is gonna be like, there's gonna be like maybe one or two more tiers of rewards re uh, in competitive play, and I think gold is gonna be like, everyone can get it, and then you're gonna get sort of like a, a WoW arena style, like, oh, if you're in the top 0.5%, you might get something cool. Yeah, well, actually, that we were going to talk about that next, but you brought it up, so here we go. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't get anyone else a chance to talk. <laughs> My bad, guys. In the string of the code, there was uh, the word Season 1 Challenger and Season 1 Hero. Uh, and basically, uh, in the old tiered system, the getting to uh, equivalent of Hearthstone Legend was called Heroic. So now, it's, you can only assume that the Season 1 Hero is the ultimate goal sure. to get in the season. You are the upper echelon of player. And Jeff Kaplan said that there will be uh, exclusive other cosmetic rewards that only the highest skilled players can get and nobody else can. Uh, the assumption is everybody will be able to get golden weapons because it's a cumulative thing. Mm. Um, you know, obviously if you play a ton and get more competitive points, you can unlock it sooner, but... Kevin, do you have any idea what those might be? My, my anticipation is that, um, similar to some other Blizzard games, we're gonna see, those are probably just season and reward designations, so um, I, I don't have any insight into this, but I'm assuming it's something like, if you reach rank, let's just say 50, or something like that in the competitive season, similar to hitting rank 17 in Hearthstone, you maybe unlock that season's card back, the equivalent here um, could be some sort of reward at the end of the season, maybe a pixel uh, picture or something like that. Um, my guess then is that once you reach rank 100, similar again to Hearthstone, when you reach rank one and surpass it, you're gonna unlock this heroic mode. I would imagine anyone who gets into this mode will unlock that heroic designation and then, just like their other games, they'll probably have some sort of a grandmaster for the top 200, 500 players, something like that. So that's my anticipation, just kind of knowing other Blizzard games. Chloe, what would you want to see? that uh, you got to see the golden guns, you got to see mm -hmm. the sprays, what would you want out of cosmetic rewards? Because you played a lot of Counter-Strike. I did play a lot of Counter-Strike, and I will admit to having bought a few skins, <laughs> but I, I actually honestly don't really care too much about cosmetics in Overwatch. Like, I, I sort of think the golden guns look a little tacky. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, don't That's be sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, they're, they're an easy way to just in-game, like an, an easy, uh, non-distracting way to, yeah, to tell, like, like who's, who's a top player and who's not and stuff, but like, for me, that's not why I'm going to play competitive. Um, I mean, I guess maybe exclusive skins would be kind of cool, but not a big priority for I, me. I just want a visual representation that I'm better than you. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah, care what it looks like, so, yeah. And I like that that's they're funny. that they're earned and not, you don't, you don't just dip into the Counter-Strike market and buy a skin, you know? Yeah. It's like, and anyone can have it. It's like, the fact that it's earned is cool, so. Um, yeah. I'm into that. I'm just. I don't really mind too much either way. Just want to play. Just want to play competitive. Yeah, I'm, too. I'm tired yeah. of bugs. I'm. I'm. I, I'm just gonna say it. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to play with people Let in the public out. anymore. I want to <laughs> form a team. I want to get people that are serious about this, sure. and I want to go play because I'm just. I'm just tired of like. Oh, I haven't sniped in a while. I guess I'll lock in Widowmaker. Hanzo, Hanzo, Widowmaker comes yeah. on my team I had, too. And I I'm had just three like, Hanzos on attack great. the other day, and well, I was just like, stop it, you guys. It's pretty much guaranteed if you've got to pick up a, a pug, it's gonna be either a Hanzo or a Genji player. That's. Mm. Yes. I know. So I I know. I, that's the most frustrating one for me. It's just people who just insta lock Genji in every situation. Stop it! Yeah. Please! He's easy to counter. Uh. Yeah, they're, they're usually pretty good, but at the same time, it's kind of a scenario where it's like, oh, you know, you've been playing for three games. The people we're playing against know they're going to counter you. Yes, uh, and exactly. 
So for a long time in alpha and beta, I was playing solo queue, just because it it's the lowest barrier for entry, you jump right in. Recently, I've almost refused to play unless I have at least one other person to play with, and I'm actually playing uh, Kyle O'Connor, you have a group of friends yeah, yeah. from the WoW days. Yeah, shout out to all my friends, Falk, yeah. DJ, all those guys. Uh, we They were my friends from World of Warcraft from Vanilla, we would be do Battlegrounds together, then arenas, and then raids. Sure. And the only re I was talking to Duggan about this, the only reason I'd ever do PvE was to get a better weapon for my rep set on my Paladin. So these are these same guys that we would play with, and now we're all doing Overwatch together. We actually all came back for Overwatch, and it's a huge difference playing with a coordinated group. Mm -hmm. you, sure. You can say like, oh, hey, you know, we really don't need a soldier right now. We need a sniper. And someone will be like, okay, cool. I'll change. They won't well, call you. They won't ideally, call you names. Ideally, <laughs> ideally, yeah, the right like, group. We won't point any names. <laughs> no, he's gotten better. He's a recovering solo queuer. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? You mentioned that you and a lot of your friends came from WoW. Um, in the pro scene, I cover eSports a lot, we're, we're actually seeing that about half the players are coming from you know, TF2 and other sort of arena shooters. And about half the players are coming from the MMO crowd. There's a huge crossover between people who play old MMOs that are coming into this now. Yeah, that's interesting. I could see it, why? Because it's it just, if you can fundamentally just have the ability to coordinate and work with a team, you're gonna do a lot better than sure. random pickup mm -hmm. groups. It's just, it's just logic. And yeah. if, you, if you're not willing to adapt and like adjust as a team, then you don't really get the point of Overwatch, in my opinion. And I think what's really interesting about a bunch of people coming from WoW, which is you know a tap target game where yeah. you don't you don't need to aim basically anything. No. Um, you don't have to be a headshot lord. Is my no, point. No, exactly. Like, you just and, have I, to and I think that's what makes this game so unique and fun in comparison to other arena shooters or even hero shooters is that the primary skill differentiator in this game for all characters isn't necessarily lining up your reticle on someone and pressing left click. Sometimes it's awareness or using your abilities, or in the case of Lucio, just being well positioned in the middle of your team. Yeah. And I think that makes the game a lot right more approachable too. and is just makes it so much more fun. Map map awareness. Mm -hmm. you, you go ahead. Map Don. awareness is super important. Like I, I see people just using Junkrat, for instance, just spamming grenades, and they don't understand the different ways that you can angle it to hit exactly the point you want yep. and still be in a safe zone. Yeah, you know, it's exactly. like exactly. Uh, we were talking earlier. I think you could kind of classify some characters as you know, like zone control and, and distance control. But I think it's also important for people to be aware of the neutral objectives. You should be you should be really keeping in mind as on payload maps as you were moving forward, like the big health packs, those yep. are huge. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, choke points in hallways, uh, choke points in paths, because, you know, Blizzard has designed the map so well that it takes a while to get to certain points if you're not a wall runner or a flyer mm -hmm. or a widow maker. So if you can control those choke points and stop people from being able to get above your team, it's huge, it's beneficial. Like, you may not get all the kills and you may not get gold medals, but you'll get the W, which matters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The W. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's, all that, it's all that matters. It's not a deathmatch game. All right, let's talk about, uh, going back to the aesthetic rewards a little bit, something that I want to see um, that is present in Heroes of the Storm mm -hmm. is the master skin. And this is kind of demonstrating a mastery of a certain character, Ganji Tracer. And maybe that does kind of incentivize you just picking him no matter what because you're working on it, which maybe isn't the best fit for this game. But I really like the idea of having to complete, a, like, I love using Pharah's ult, using Reinhardt's ult, and then you unlock the cute spray, yeah. um, specifically tied to that achievement. I would like to see an iteration of that that is just a little bit more grandiose in terms of like, okay, you've mastered Reinhardt, here's this awesome skin that you don't need to craft XYZ. So, but I wanna ask you, the audience, what you wanna see in terms of aesthetic rewards, ranked play, casual play, what have you. Let us know in the comments and we will uh, read out some, some fan answers on uh, episode three when that happens. What do you guys think? Is there anything that you wanna see that jumps to oh. I, I love Master Skins, and I love them in Heroes because a lot of the justification for putting them in was maybe you don't necessarily want to spend on the game, but you still want a differentiator, and this shows the world that you do have some level of competency with that particular character. So I, I think they're completely fine. I love them. Maybe it will incentivize some people to have more mains. I've played 22 hours of Reaper or something like yeah. that up to this point. <laughs> That's incredible. I feel like people, uh, I feel like people yeah. naturally kind of have that anyway. So Totally, totally. It's fine. Sure. What, what do I you love think them. about it? You think it would be a good idea? Or? Yeah, I mean... More skins are cool, I guess. Again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I forget. You don't like. I, I would. You, love you're it. there for it's ranks. Not, it's not that I don't like. like yeah. It's I just don't. You know, not not a priority. I, I, sure. I think the idea, like similar to Smite, if you've ever played Smite, where they'd have like you know the golden skins and then the the diamond skins. If you've had a X amount of wins or games played, I I think that would be really cool. But I don't know if it'll happen because. Um, Blizzard wants to stop people from just sure. So Chloe, okay, let me ask you this: Would skins be more interesting if you could say, like, bet your child's uh, college <laughs> <laughs> on like maybe getting a sick knife? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh boy, no, the oh, college boy, like, we're getting oh, our strike shade. Shade. Uh, <laughs> strike shade. No. Uh, That's so funny. Yeah. All right. So recently, McCree and Widow got nerfed, and it kind of changed everything. Um, playing, strangely enough, playing Hearthstone gave me a concept of uh, contextual nerfs and buffs. So in one card. 
like let's say Dr. Boom got nerfed or just removed from the format, a bunch of other seven cost cards are starting to see play and got like kind of stealth buffs. So be it. And as a result, I think the characters that have uh, benefited the most from McCree getting nerfed, not that he can't still kill these characters, it's just that he isn't picked as much. And then Widow uh, being unable to body shot somebody like Zenyatta, one hit, um, has made Zenyatta, Tracer, and strangely enough, May. I think May is just a monster who must be stopped. Yeah, please, absolutely. if you see May, kill her. <laughs> yes, <laughs> May, May is incredibly strong right now. I actually think Reaper um, got the biggest uh, uh, indirect nerf here because Fan the Hammer just does not kill me in one shot anymore. You um, meant buff, right? Um, I'm sorry, buff. Yes. Okay, cool. So, so you know, McCree has to consciously come up to be shoot me two or three times before he can engage with Flashbang uh, and his Fan the Hammer now, and as Reaper. I, I, like I said, I main Reaper. I've spent about a third of my time in the game on Reaper up to this point. Uh, and I feel no more powerful in the game than I do right now with McCree and Widow actually getting shut down. Because now two body shots don't necessarily kill me anymore, which is a big deal. Add into that that Reaper not only has incredible mobility, but he also has a left shift sustain escape. Um, he's silly strong right now. Mm. Silly strong in my opinion. You brought up a good point about Tracer. Yeah, I think she's... Uh Becoming top tier. It was a character that I played a lot in the closed beta, who I loved the idea of the high skill cap, and I, a lot of people dislike Tracer v. Tracer fights. I love it. Um, I agree. I, I feel like I'm, I don't know, it's just completely testing my situational awareness, my my aim, my ability to time certain Your map things. awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and she, I basically stopped playing her because she was getting one shot by Ferris. she was getting, you know, basically one or two shot by Widow, and then McCree was just a hard counter. And to be fair, McCree is still a hard counter. Yes. Uh, however, he's just not as good against tanks. He's not as good against Reaper, against May. He's uh, less likely of a pick, and therefore Tracer is reigning supreme, um, which is really fun because I really enjoy playing her. But mm -hmm. Zenyatta as well. Zenyatta got a kind of a contextual buff just because. Yeah. Uh, now you don't have Widowmaker and McCree go gun in for you the whole time. He's still so squishy though, my He guy. is so I, squishy. I, 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 so think squishy. He's, I think he's a great support, but I think he's a great support in terms of you have to pick the right duo with you, him. You, uh, people undervalue Transcendence yeah. right yeah. now because Transcendence, if everyone is in that range, you can out-sustain a Hanzo ult. You yeah. can out-sustain um, almost every amount of like Torbjorn damage that can come towards yeah. you. Even Bastion becomes less effective. Like Transcendence is really good if you're in a coordinated group. So I think, uh, and Lucio kind of have him be just, beget. so this is a soldier yeah. player, I play soldier a lot. Uh, don't worry, I'm playing other characters, but soldier, <laughs> he's just so good. He really uh, is. He's autonomous, he's kind of a, you know, one size fits all kind of character, but if I see a Zenyatta in the open, my aim has gotten to the point where if he's in the open, he's dead. Uh, unless he gets behind something like a Reinhardt wall, and Mercy does not have that problem as much. She's still very squishy. Same thing with Lucio. They're mobile, they're hard to hit. You know, Mercy can kind of like jump to other characters, and she's uh, a real pain in the butt, but Zenyatta just. His lack of mobility, I think, is kind of what uh, th something keeps I think me that, from playing him. I think that people undervalue, too, on the other characters is that they have more built-in regen. Even though he has shields that can't come back or some circumstances, he doesn't have the ability, like Mercy, to just step away and passive regen. Or Lucio, just swap over your left shift to your healing one, hit an E, and you're Drop back at full feet. health immediately, <laughs> right? So I, I think Zenyatta Lucio. suffers a little bit from just not having that built-in sustain for himself. Mm. Uh, Chloe, what do you think? I'm so ashamed. I don't play support that often. <laughs> oh, you're the one. No, you're that no. person. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. You're like me a couple weeks ago. <laughs> no, I know. I, I, it's been on my to-do list. <laughs> I, I just have too much fun playing other characters that I just. Yep. I gave I gave Duggan a lot of uh, guff for sure. uh, for not playing anything other than an offense character. I'll be ready by competitive by by comp mode. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I I like I gave him a bunch of a bunch of. Uh, crap for it, but all I play is tanks and, um, sure. yep, pretty much tanks now. Tanks and Torbjorn, basically. Mm. Well, it's it's a scenario, I love playing Thresh in League of Legends, mm -hmm. one of my favorite yeah. characters to play, but man, you just put your success in other people's hands. Exactly. Yeah. And I, yeah. yep. I am not down with that. No. I don't yeah. like it. I, I dislike when everybody's, get, nobody, none of our offense characters are getting kills. I'm just like, ooh, just, come on, hit him in the head, you can yeah. do it. But uh, what's the most tough, frustrating for me is when I pick a tank or an off damage or something like that. Someone just, you know, to be used for positional reasons or occasional burst damage. Then you look up and you have four golds and you're like, what is the rest of the team doing? I have, Shoot someone, I've please. gotten golds for healing with soldier. I know. <laughs> I want, yeah. No, it's, it's bad. Funny. It's bad. That's funny. No, it's not. It's not impressive. It's sad. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about uh, a little topic that we discussed last week, or not last week, God, last month. We went to E3, okay? Okay, give us a break. Yeah, we're recovering. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be here a lot more. Uh, so we were talking about 
conceptualizing a new hero, what the game needs in terms of is, is it a support hero as it needs? Is it a crazy wall crawler? Uh, and I kind of posted a question on uh, IGN.com. And we got some really interesting responses. Rob5891 says the character half humanoid, half mechanical spider, I'm in so far, could spray webbing that has a slowing effect on characters and would be an effective counter to character like Tracer or Reaper. This is sounding a lot like May, so now I'm off. Spider May. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So many no. Spider May. Um, they could also lay little mechanical spiderlings that would like kind of attack your feet if you walk past them. Uh, Venom coated claws, I like it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> This oh, wait, like wait, her <laughs> ultimate could wrap someone in a web, uh, cocoon, drain their life, uh, and if the cocoon were to kill them, more spiderlings would crawl out of the cocoon. Oh, no. It's like an, I, a, an Arachne Elise combo yeah. from Smite and League of Legends. I love the thought of a pet character, though. Yeah. A character yeah. that spawns something, you know, mm -hmm. minions, units, I don't know what it is. I, I like that aspect of it, yeah. yeah that'd be fun to counter a soldier, too. <laughs> right? Yeah. That'd be fun to yeah. kill. <laughs> but this fits I'm in an archetype that you, were, you and I were actually talking about, Kevin, which is the one-size-fits-all, the soldier, mm -hmm. uh, the May, I think. May is super survivable. She does a ton of damage. She's very dangerous up close, very dangerous at range. And you were saying to me that you think the game needs less of these type of characters. I would love to see some more hyper-specialized characters. Characters like uh, Widowmaker at this point is a headshot specialist and a, and, and a recon specialist, right? That's great. She doesn't need sustain. She doesn't need to have incredible damage um, apart, you know, up close or something like that. And I feel that a lot of the most recent heroes, D.Va could even fit into this. They just do so many things well and not one thing particularly well, um, especially in the pro scene you kind of have a stale meta because they're just always picked and because they can do everything. They can fill all the gaps. I, I don't like that. I, I'd like there to be a bit more thought process put in to these hyper-specialized characters. Uh, so this is a weird question that I just kind of came up with. What do you think the timing looks like for new heroes uh, in the context of these seasons? Because I think if you have your mid-season and you drop a new character in there, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I definitely think it's... I guess League of Legends really never observed that, but, but to be fair, they had like, what, six month, eight month seasons? They were long. Right. League of Legends, but they drop characters in the middle of the seasons, like, yeah. frequently. But also, Overwatch's payment model and their revenue model is not based on selling heroes, necessarily, yeah. right? And they've already announced that if you buy the game, you're gonna get all future heroes for free. I'm not saying there's not an incentive for them to continue shaking up the game and introduce new heroes. My anticipation, though, is that we're gonna see much less than we see in current MOBAs and things like that. Mm. Sure. I think, else? I think I think we'll see. I think we'll get competitive, and then I think we'll get a new character because they dropped in the beta. They dropped uh, Diva and May, 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 May at the same time. Mm -hmm. So and Genji too. Both yep. the same one. Yep. Genji mm -hmm. dropped at all the three same of those. Time? Yeah. Wow. I God, what, how great the game was before that patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they dropped them in like little squads like that, little twos or threes. Yeah, I, I, I kind of get the feeling they're gonna do that too, or like yeah. theme packs, or maybe they'll introduce like three new villains or something like that. You know, into the lore. Cool. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, and also Jeff Kaplan said he wanted to see more cosmetic rewards down the line that weren't necessarily tied to ranked. So there's support for this game. I think what's really interesting about this game is, you know, like, obviously we're covering it as if it's an online persistent universe, and it really is. It's a, a community, but the payment model is such that, like, you pay once, you're done. But Blizzard has been very good about supporting those kinds of games. I think Diablo 3 is the perfect example. You, you know. Am I the only one who bought loot boxes? I I'm bought loot boxes. I'm going to start scratching right here. <laughs> we pay once and we're done? Yeah, is, that, is that... Uh, <laughs> I haven't bought loot boxes yet. I neither have oh. I. I okay, refuse right. to... I actually feel as though... You refuse? Kind of, you're terrible. I feel like game. I'm, I'm short-circuiting my progression. Because Fair the enough. whole fun Fair of enough. leveling, getting to that kind of prestige, or I'm not exactly sure what they call it, and then you get to do levels 1 through 10 again and just get a rain of loot boxes on you, is the whole idea you're going to get more But I levels. wanted the Evil Knievel skin now. <laughs> like, that's that's the problem. Did you get it in your I loot did. box? Is that, that your favorite Well, no, no, I, I used it. What's your favorite What's skin? Oh, good lord. Oh, that my might have been, I shouldn't have dropped that. Oh, jeez, yeah, that's a big... My favorite skin in the entire game is either a toss-up between Scuba Winston or... <laughs> Um, <laughs> what? Get You're out of here. silly. Um, or silly. Mariachi Reaper. All right, that, was good. Uh, that one's good. That one's yeah. Good. Oh man, uh, definitely, and it's a character that I need to play more of and don't necessarily enjoy playing too much of. But definitely the uh, the kind of golden Uther Paladin Reinhardt. Oh, oh that's that a good one. Good. Yeah. That was good. I don't even play Hanzo that much, but I like his uh, wolf skin. I have the lone wolf, the old yeah, wolf the lone, one. Yeah, okay, yeah. so sidebar, Seven before you samurai. get to answer, moving on. No. <laughs> <laughs> no sidebar, talking about the Hanzo skin. That has uh, unique sounds. It has unique yeah, alt effects. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. So like, that's kind of weird. League of Legends did this thing where they had like a legendary skin for a long time, yeah. and it would be uh, different. And then they they animations. got rid of the old ones because they were like, uh, these aren't really up to stuff anymore. Yeah. We need new sounds. We need new animations. And I would kind of like to see that out of some of the other skins. Like I feel as though 
That'll Mary, be com- Mariachi Reaper can shoot confetti think, with his ultimate. I don't know. I think that'd be uh, co- uh, just a cool, like, exclusive, like, for, in competitive mode for the higher ranked people, mm. too. To just yeah, have. That'd be interesting. I, I know that. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, what's please. your favorite skin? Uh, <laughs> it's it's gonna I, I'm it's gonna be Reinhardt skins. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, Bloodheart sure. and Paragon, which is an epic skin. Oh, still, Paragon oh, is so Paragon's good. Yeah. So damn. There good. are a couple characters that have better epic skins than they do mm-hmm. legendary skins. Pharah, I like the 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 Anubis based yeah. Pharah better really than cool. I do any of the legendary ones. So, so I worked on the Heroes of the Storm team and StarCraft team for a couple years, and while the teams are very different at Blizzard. I can still say though that like once they started adding in those cool effects into heroes characters, people went nuts for them, and then they added them to all of them. Uh-huh. So I can't say or predict that they're going to do that for all the skins as you're suggesting, but something tells me we're going to get a lot more visual updates for those. I've said this. I think I've said this on other shows. I've said it on comments and stuff like that. But I am positive we're going to get crossover skins like a Lich King Reinhardt. I I kind of suspect that too. Yeah, uh, 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 a Rainer um, a Rainer Soldier seventy six skin, a Nova <laughs> Widowmaker skin, a Tyrael Mercy skin. Mm. They all work. So I, I absolutely a freaking um, oh my god! What's the tank driver name? I can't believe I'm black. Sergeant yeah. Hammer. Uh, Sergeant Hammer. Gotcha. Uh, uh, Bastion skin. Yep. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh yeah, my that'd god! Be cool. Please give me all I of it. Want a is odd May. Oh. This is where you really crappy Ooh. cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just terrible cosplay. <laughs> man. Just Suffer cool. my wrath. <laughs> that's awesome. We we're right. on a huge tangent. I'm uh, sorry. I just want to remind. That's fine. Actually, we need to fill some time, but we're just about. Uh, done with it. So I just want to remind everybody, uh, tell us what you would like to see in terms of cosmetic rewards. Um, That's something that we'll be featuring on the show next week, along with some potential different topics. But uh, I'm very excited to see, oh, one more thing. I believe the season one ends, so like the actual season one, ends August 17th. Yes. So obviously it's happening before the end of June. It's got to be soon. So Mm -hmm. hopefully next uh, episode we'll be talking about our experience in a non-PTR setting. And I'm really curious to see if they'll adjust things like sudden death. A lot of people aren't really into it. If they'll adjust things like uh, hero limits. And I'm curious to see them play with it. I almost wish they had had a longer test for the competitive play mode, but they're kind of past that point now, so. All right, everyone, that's it for episode two. But before we go, Kevin Aki, you had something to say. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to be casting the largest Overwatch tournament up to this point in San Francisco. It's the OG Invitational. That's awesome. Put on by Josh OG. Super looking forward to it. Team Liquid, NVS, Cloud9, uh, Luminosity going to be there. You can check out more at OGInvitational.com or watch it on Twitch.tv slash Josh OG. Also plug your show. Oh, yeah, and I also host uh, IGN Esports Today on Bleacher Report Radio, Sirius XM Channel 83, every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. They have some killer, like, audio intro outros. It's like, cuckoo Kevin Naki. Anyway, all right, that is it. <laughs> now we're actually done. So you can watch Overwatch HQ on IGN, YouTube, Xbox One, PS4, iTunes, and other platforms. And remember, the world could always use more heroes. So for all things Overwatch, keep it right here on Overwatch HQ. Overwatch HQ.